B'shem Hashem Na'asev Nasliach. Picking up where we left off. In Gates of Repentance, Sha'aret Teshuvah of Rabbeinu Yonah. We left off last time, if you recall, um, right after Seif Hay, which was the fifth paragraph. We're going to go into the sixth paragraph. As we said before, the, the Sefer is divided by She'arim, which technically means gates. So those are like chapters. Within these chapters, we have paragraphs, and they're cut off by paragraph. Paragraph 1, paragraph 2, paragraph 3. So we, we just finished paragraph 5. We're going to go into paragraph 6. But what we left off with was <coughs> that the last part of what we said was when a person keeps on doing an avera, when a person keeps on making mistakes, in time, little by little, these things start becoming like heter for the person, like permissible for the person, where you don't really feel you're doing anything wrong anymore. Now he says, Ve'ata, and now, Bina shim azot. Understand and listen to this. He uses a double language, double lashon, of to understand and hear. Why? He's trying to be, trying to be adamant about something important he's about to say. So he's saying, don't just understand this, but really listen here. Really think deep. Really try to understand and deep inside make this sit. Because he wants us to understand the importance of it. Like, you know, when poems, the rule of a poem is always when something is repeated twice, that's really what the po poet is really trying to say, bring out. Here too, he's trying to bring out an important, important rule. Bina shimazot, understand and hear this. Kihu ikar gadol, because this is truly a great ikar, um, a great principle. Emet hadavar ki yesh mina tzaddikim shenichshalim bechet lifamim. It is true that there are also the righteous shenichshalim bechet lifamim that also fall prey to making mistakes, doing averot. This is, he's talking about tzaddikim. Let's just try to understand what the Rabbeinu Yonah is talking about. Rabbeinu Yonah is a rishon. He's a... What do you call a rishon in English? What? Sage? No. The early, the early sages. Okay? So, when a rishon says, even tzaddikim, the righteous, sometimes sin... He's not talking about righteous in our times. And he doesn't really, thank you, he doesn't just throw out words like that when Rabbeinu Yonah says, <laughs> you know, he doesn't count to your guy, tzaddik. <laughs> you know, that's not what he's talking about. And by the way, I hate it when people call people that. You know, <laughs> it's like, how are you doing, tzaddik? I'm like, what am I, your child? <laughs> no. Rabbeinu Yonah is not throwing it out there like, ah, oh, tzaddikim, no. When he, he's talking about real righteous people, people that were righteous, and he's saying, even they sometimes make mistakes. They're, they're prone to averot, to making mistakes. Like it says in Kohelet, Shlomo HaMelech says in Kohelet, this is Shlomo HaMelech, the wisest man of all. There is no such thing as a person in the world that only does good and does not make any sins. No such thing. Now, now, I don't want to get into the meat and potatoes of this subject, okay? Because this pasuk is very, very deep. There has been people that have never made mistakes, have never sinned. We know in, we know in fact of few people. <laughs> Some people are like shaking their heads like, yeah, it's me. No, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> Maybe we have one of the, you know, tzaddikim in this room. You know, no, but when your mom calls you tzaddik, she doesn't really mean it in that sense. The Kohelet, King Solomon says in Kohelet, "Lehayim todim shalom." Ki adam in tzaddik pa'aretz. There is no such thing as only tzaddik on earth, but people make mistakes. But who do we have that never sinned? We know in, in, from tradition, one was Binyamin, one of the twelve tribes. Binyamin was known that he never, in his entire life, he never. Sinned. Another was Yishai, huh? Yishai 
who was the father of David HaMelech, right? Who was known that he never sinned in his life. He was that great. You don't, you don't just, huh? You outcasted David. You have to, you have to know the whole story as to why. It's actually because, because he never sinned or he never wanted to sin, that he did what he did. Right, so that's definitely not counted as a sin. Even David agreed to it. But you were here, Hoshana Rabba night, all night, when I gave the entire story of David Amelech and his dynasty. Right? So you, then if you were there, you would understand that he didn't sin. He was doing it because he thought that it could be an Avera. So he wanted to stay away from it. That's all. So, Yishai was one of them. So, so here he's, he's talking about Yesh. He's saying there are even tzaddikim that make mistakes. Why is he telling us this? They grab on, they, or they, or they um, subdue their yetzer hara. If, if they do fall prey to an avera. And if they fall prey to a certain sin, to an avera, one time, lo yishnu lo. They will not repeat that sin. That's the difference between a tzaddik that makes a mistake, that doesn't have a and someone else that doesn't have a When a tzaddik actually doesn't have a falls prey to sin, they won't repeat it again. They'll do teshuvah right away, they'll admit, they'll have kharata, they'll have shame because of it, and they'll stop. It's not going to be repeated. Benakot <laughs> bifnehem. And it's very looked upon very negative by them. And they do teshuvah. And they do complete teshuvah. So now if I ask you, what is the difference between a tzaddik and somebody else that doesn't have a let's, 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 let's be very clear. What's the difference between a tzaddik that makes an avera that doesn't have a that makes a mistake, and, uh, and, and us when we do averot? The difference is pretty clear. It's not that a tzaddik never makes a mistake. Other about the opposite. Tzaddikim also make mistakes. But the difference is they'll, they'll, they'll really look deep in that mistake. They'll do teshuva. They will really have a, a sense of regret for it. And they won't repeat it again. Us, not so much all the time. Sometimes we could, we could attest to the fact that one of those steps is missing. Either we won't feel too bad about it, even though knowing it was a mistake. So we'll do teshuva and we'll say, okay, we won't do it again, right? But then we might fall prey to it again, right? So on and so forth. But it's not going to be so clear cut. But by tzaddikim, it's very different. By a tzaddik, like we said before in the previous chapter, when a tzaddik makes a mistake, it literally breaks their world. The world crumbles down for making such a big mistake. Whatever the mistake may be. Ah. However, call Asher Eno Nizhar Mechet Yadua. Anybody that is not careful with a known uh, 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 stumbling block, let's call it, a known avera, you know that you're prone to make a mistake when it comes to a certain situation. Everybody has those pitfalls that they can't, you know, get over. They feel like, oh, this is, this is my challenge. I can't, I can't get rid of this. I, 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 I can't, right? So, if you're not anybody that's not careful with a known sin, if you're not careful with something that you know is a challenge to you, like we've given the example of uh, an alcoholic that has, you know, that has recently regretted being an alcoholic and he's gone to AA meetings, but he won't move his home that's next door to a bar. Okay? Anybody that knows they have a challenge and they're still, you know, they still surround themselves with the same challenging atmosphere. And step number two is they do not accept upon themselves to make guidelines to watch out for that problem. So there's two steps. You know that there is a challenge that, you, that has gotten you more than once. And two, you do not safeguard yourself from it. You do not make boundaries for yourself from that challenge. 
גם אם הוא מהעוונות הקלים. This is, uh, this, <laughs> it's simple, but he's trying to, he brings out such simple things to make, make us understand how severe something can actually become. גם אם הוא מהעוונות הקלים, even if it's the most of simplest and the lowliest of sins. We're not talking about here like this guy is a bank robber and he's, a, he's kidnapped people more than once. He's gone to people's homes, tied them down, and take them for ransom and taken money for it, right? Which is one of the Ten Commandments. We're not talking about a crazy, you know. We're talking about avonot akalim, small sins. Like, I don't know. You think of one. Afar pishu nizhar mikol avonot Shabbat Torah. Oh, oh, oh. This guy we're talking about is careful for all the different avarot of the Torah. Very strange. He's even machmir when it comes to the mitzvot that he's accepted upon himself or herself to keep. He's careful with the mitzvot. However, there are some avarot that he or she feels like, ah, listen, this one, it's okay. It's not, who says? There's a, it's, really, it's really a machloket. Don't really know that for sure you need to do this mitzvah. Everything else I keep. This one I don't think I need to. I, I really don't have to. Now, let, let me let me allow me allow me to explain to you what kind of person I'm talking about. I don't know if anybody in this room knows such a person. Just in case someone in this room knows such a person, maybe we can help them together. Okay, person we're talking about is like this. Let's say the person is Shomer Shabbat, keeps Shabbat fully, keeps kosher fully, all of that stuff, right? Let's say talking about a guy now. Let's, let's pick on guys for a second, okay? Shomer Shabbat, Shomer Mitzvot, and, and, and puts on tefillin every morning, prays with the minyan every day, right? But they don't wear tzitzit. Why? Because... Really is a machloket. Do you really have to have a tzitzit? The Torah really only says if you have a four-cornered garment, you have to put tzitzit on it. Which means if you don't have a four-cornered garment, you don't have to put tzitzit on it. And it has to be seen. <laughs> As if I know the whole Torah. This one's not seen. It's under my clothes. It's never going to be seen. I can't put the, I can't put the bands out because I'm not Ashkenaz. Right? Because they do that. So that's why I don't, I don't wear tzitzit. What, what is that kind of a person called? Oh, oh, we only did the guys. We have to do girls also. It's not fair. We're not only picking on the girl, guys. Okay. Uh, 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 um, girls. Uh, huh? Bring it on. Okay. We're bringing it on now. I'm trying to think of one. I can't find one right now. Because girls are so holy. Women are holier. I can't even think. Think of an avera that a woman would do, or some challenge. Chas v'shalom, not an avera. Challenge. Okay? We have to sugarcoat it. Um, I don't know. A, a, a challenge usually women might have. I, I don't. Let, let's call it like this. Huh? Oh! Beautiful. Lashon hara. Okay? Okay? By the way, the one, I'm not going to say who said this. Run. Okay? <laughs> Lajon hara, let's say. This is a challenge really for both men and women. All right, but let's say the challenge is more. Let's say the challenge is more severe when it comes to women. We're not saying it is. Let's say it is. So the woman is. <laughs> Stop. Stop. Some of you still need to get married. I'm already married. But <laughs> Shem, you're all going to be. Oh, I'm going to drink to this. I, this should be alcoholic. So uh, everything you keep. Everything you keep, but then, this, this, this is not Lashon Hara, because she knows that I'm telling, telling these things about her. Or, she's right here. Like, we make heterim for ourselves, right? Or, he's right here. What I'm saying, he's hearing. That's absolutely Lashon Hara, right? Or, or, or I don't know. Or, it's true. I'm not lying. It's true. I had to actually stand and convince somebody a few weeks ago that what they were telling me was 100% Ashan Hara. And the person was like, no, this really happened. I'm like, I know, but it's <laughs> negative. It's like, I don't understand. This is not negative speech because it really happened. He really did this to us. I'm like, I understand, but that's what Lashon Hara is, right? But that person didn't know. 
But other people know that it's Lashon Hara, but they make different reasons in their own mind as to why it's not and why it's okay. Such people, Kiru'uhu Chachme Yisrael, they are called by the Chachamim of Yisrael, in Gemara Chulin, Mumar Davar Echad. They are apostate to one thing. What does that mean? That means in that one thing, they are considered gone. Now why? People make mistakes. Are you telling me I'm going to be, oh my God, just for, for one mistake? It's not what it means. There's a difference here. Now you, we all need to see which camp we belong to. It's up to you. There are two camps here, Camp A and Camp B. They also have t-shirts. Camp A has blue t-shirts, Camp B has red t-shirts. Camp A is of the, of the kind of people that make mistakes, they keep everything, right? But there is one thing they don't keep and they know it's wrong and they're trying to fix it. But once in a while they stumble upon it and, 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 and they give in. That's whatever. That's camp A, right? That's camp A. Camp B, camp B are people that also have the same challenge, also have things they can't really, you know, it, it's, it's, it's hard for them. But what do they say? They're like, Shomer Negia is only a rabbinic thing, right? And, 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 and if you look at it, it was only instated for people that were <gasps> like, uh, what do you call them? Perverts. But like, <laughs> today you'll get sued. You look at a person the wrong way. So no one's. So you make up laws and, and reasoning in your, in your own mind how it's okay not to be, let's say, Shomer Negia today. Right? That kind of a person is called a Mumar, an apostate. It's, it's like you're gone. You're a goner. You're finished. You're, 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 you're looked upon very negatively. Why? Because Camp A does something wrong, knowing it's wrong, and is not okay with that camp. They're not okay with it. It happens. It's bad. But it happens, and they're not okay with it. They're trying. That's still okay. Camp B is saying what? No. I keep everything else. What? 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 You're going to tell me because I don't keep this one thing, which is really rabbinic, which really doesn't matter, and I believe that it shouldn't even be kept? You think I'm bad because of that? Yes. You know why? Because it's become a way of life for you. You've made it okay for yourself. It's become a shita. This is my belief, as if you have just become an, a, 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 a rabbinic authority, and you put your stamp on this one thing. I do not need to wear tzitzit. Okay? I go to shul every Shabbat because I want to pray. Yeah, but you're driving. Yeah, but, but, but no, 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 it's okay because I'm trying to go pray to God. Well, it's, you can't, one does not get rid of the other, right? If you know it's wrong and you're trying to stop, again, you're diff in a different camp. But this is talking about a person that makes this a shita. It becomes a, a, a philosophy. My philosophy is, because I keep all these other things, I'm still going to end up in heaven. Because the other thing that I keep doing wrong, it's not really wrong. I'll give you 10 reasons why it's not really wrong. You know how many of those people I've had the pleasure of speaking to? You know? And he's going to na name them. This becomes their sin becomes extremely great. Why? Because you keep repeating it. Because you've told yourself that you're okay doing this. Right? So you have all these different mitzvot, you're doing fine, but there's this one thing that you're, you keep doing wrong, not because you're stumbling, you're doing it bishita on purpose, because you believe it's okay. Right? Imagine, a, a, a servant, a slave, says to his master, Anything you tell me, my master, anything you tell me I will do, except this one thing I'm not going to do. Is that really called a servant? That's not a servant. What is a servant? Servant is whatever the master says the servant does. Right? If the servant picks and chooses of what it does, it is no longer a servant. 
Now, if, if the servant all of a sudden, you know, wasn't able to do something, fine, it wasn't able to do it, right? But a, pers- a servant that tells the master, listen, 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 these 10 things you've given me to do, I got you for none of them. The 10th one, yeah, I got to find somebody else to do it. I ain't doing it. <laughs> you know, you're no, you're, you are no longer considered a servant. So you say to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, listen, God, listen to me. Shabbat, I love Shabbat. And you give your, yourself all these like, great reasons where you've read up on, on Google. Shabbat brings the family together. It's time for family. It's a time when we can disconnect from our phones and put everything away. And life becomes bliss. Shabbat is a time when you could relax and disconnect yourself from the outside world. So life becomes wonderful, right? Even though those days, all that stuff didn't even matter. Shabbat is Shabbat because God said so, period. The fact that you get plenty of family time, that's a plus, right? So now, Shabbat, I keep. This, I keep. But vegan restaurants, it's vegan. <laughs> Did I just hit a <laughs> chord? <laughs> it's, it's, I don't understand. It's rabbinic OCD. It's the new thing. Like When they say you can't go to vegan restaurants, it's just OCD. You know what? It's just these rabbis trying to make money. Seriously? You just made yourself a shita. Because you have no information whatsoever as to what it takes to make a place kosher. So what do you do? You take things into your own hand. Why? Because you have no self-control. You want to be God knows where and be able to eat whenever you want to eat. So what do you do? So you make this philosophy for yourself. Philosophy is rabbis are, and in that philosophy there's Lashon Hara, there's Rechilud. Rabbis are this, rabbis are that. It's all about money, the RCC. Da, 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 da. So that what? I can eat a tofu plate. <laughs> All that for some salad. Now, one little, just one. One time, this was too big. I got to make that smaller just to make my point clear. One little tiny fly that size is five portions of kazayit of pig. Now, chinze in the Tofu Shanghai restaurant does not care how many bugs you eat. They don't wash the vegetables so that you don't eat a bug. They wash it just to clean it so it looks wet when you have it so you know it's clean, right? But God knows how much infested these, some of these vegetables are. There are vegetables that you can search up on, like you literally cannot eat the leaves. You have to cut the leaves and just eat the stalk. That's how bad some of these vegetables are. Artichoke, oh my God. Like, it's infested, right? So you go to a nice vegan restaurant and you tell yourself, Mm-mm-mm. I'm going to have a salad that was not prepared next to any meat or any chicken, because I am a tzaddik. I only eat kosher bugs. I only eat, (laughs) I only eat kosher. Beshita, my philosophy is, you must eat kosher in order to stay healthy. Therefore, I'm just gonna eat fruits and salads and stuff like that. When you make those kind of mistakes, that's what the Chachamim are talking about. You make yourself a world where you decide what is mutar for you, what is accessible, um, what is permissible to you, and what is not. Therefore, you keep making that same mistake over and over. Why? Because you forget how it all started. You decided that it's okay. So you keep doing it. So this is different than if something is too hard and you're saying, okay, I'm not that doing Exactly. It's different. A person says, listen, I really feel bad. I want to wear tzitzit. I want to do this, but, but it's too hard for me right now. I'm too embarrassed. Or whatever. I'm too hot. I'm too this. My body's tense. I don't, whatever it is. Okay? It's too hard. It's okay. It's, I'm not saying it's okay. I'm just saying well, at least the person bad. knows. At least the person knows that it's, I'm trying to get there. So you're not justifying it. The kharata, the, the bad feeling of regret is still there. That's a good feeling. It's a gift. But once we justify it and say, no, 
ants are delicious, right? Then, 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 then you're not going to stop. Chas v'shalom, to bring that ideology onto other people, to tell other people these, these, these stupidities, to bring other people with you, then God, from, oh my gosh, then you're not only responsible for all the avarot that chas v'shalom you're doing, you're going to be responsible for God knows how many other people that are going to be making the same mistake. You get into groups and you hear what these rabbis are saying recently about vegan restaurants? Let me tell you, you get five more people to go to vegan restaurants, those five eat each of them five bugs, that's five servings of malkot. During the time of the Beit HaMikdash, five servings of lashes versus one serving of lashes for that big of a piece of pork. I mean, you got a lot that you're going to be responsible for. So when it comes to these things, my advice is don't come up with your own philosophy about things if you don't have enough information about it. Learn up on it. Really, there's a lot to be read up on these things. Read up on it. Learn up on it. And you have enough information, then you want to talk about, oh my gosh, it's all about this, it's all about that. Then, then you have something to talk about. <coughs> but when you don't know what it takes for something to be kosher, when you don't know what it takes for something to be called a mitzvah, you don't have enough information to go on yet. So now, listen to this. Okay, we said, so it's like a servant that's saying, okay, all these mitzvot I do, but this one I'm not doing it. Then he's no longer a servant. He's not really God's servant. <coughs> he's already broken the yoke of his master from upon him. So therefore, he's going to be just doing whatever he wants or she wants. One day it's this thing they don't want to do, the next day is another thing they don't want to do, and the next day it's another thing they don't want to do. It's just about what makes them comfortable. And on this it says in Devarim, Pasuk in Devarim is talking about this. Cursed is the one, wicked is the one that will not uphold these laws of the Torah and to keep them. And he says, Why does it say, Lo yagim? That does not uphold the laws of the Torah to keep them, to do them. Just say, Wicked is the one that does not do these mitzvot. What does it mean, Yakim? Beuro, it means, Asher lo yakabel al nafsho. This is talking about a person that doesn't even accept upon them, themselves that this is wrong. They're going on a road saying, No, this is right. Like the Torah says, A Jew comes and says, Shalom yihyeli ki bishrirut lilwi elech. I'm chilling. I'm good. Oh, Shalom Yeli, I'm, oh, God loves me because I'm doing what's good in my heart. How do you guys know how I'm going to end the sentence? I love this. You know, everything you, heart good, everything good. You know, it's like, no, you can't just go with your heart, keep me sure I'm good, I'm good. No, it's not. You cannot do what you want. We are all servants of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. I correct that. We are all slaves of Hashem. Halavai. We should hope to be able to be called slaves of Hashem. You know what it says by Moshe Rabbeinu when he died? And died Moses, the slave of Hashem. He got the title of slave of Hashem. That was the that's the top, top title you could get when it comes to Hashem. To be called his slave. That means you were the closest person to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. You did everything to the T that Hashem wanted. Halavai. We should be lucky to get those kind of titles. To be able to live our lives like that. To really say, this is what Hashem wants. That's what I'm going to do. Now, some of it I can't do right now, but I'm not going to fool myself and say, <laughs> no, 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 no. This is these rabbis sat down and they got together. They decided to make life miserable for people. For money. No. Ve'ot <laughs> teda. you should also know. We'll finish up with this. Ve'ot teda, you should also know. Ki hashone avera achat eser pamim. Oh, this will wake you up. You should also know. 
you repeat one avera, one sin, ten times, what do you think? Let's say, let's say, you keep literally 612 mitzvot, which is impossible, right? Because there's a lot of mitzvot that are relevant only in Eretz Israel. There are only there are certain mitzvot that are for kohanim, certain mitzvot for women, certain mitzvot for levi'im, certain mitzvot only in Eretz Israel, certain mitzvot only in the time of the Beit HaMikdash. So you're left not with 612 mitzvot. But just for argument's sake, let's say you keep 612 mitzvot perfectly, right? <coughs> but there is one mitzvah that you don't keep. And that's the same mitzvah you constantly repeat. So you think to yourself, Ani tzaddik gamur. Me'achuz. I am 100% tzaddik. I'm a mekubal because I go to Kabbalah classes also. <laughs> I think. <laughs> I go to Kabbalah and I watch the series. <laughs> and I'm a Kabbalist now. Give me your name and I will tell you what flower you like. <laughs> Those are my powers. Right? So I am, you know, I, I keep all the mitzvot, but there's just one of them that I, I just don't keep. And you keep repeating that same mistake. So you think to yourself, I only make one mistake in my life. I only have one avera. There's one avera that I agree, Hashem, I agree. There's this one avera that I have. Yes, you're right. 612 I'm keeping, right? But if you're doing it beshita, if you're doing it as a philosophy, you know what it says? That same avera is not just one avera. Every single time you transgress that avera is a separate avera. You did it 10 times, you don't have one avera because it's one avera. <laughs> You have 10 different Taravarot and it gets bigger and bigger. The punishment gets bigger and bigger each time. Because each time you do it, it becomes more of a heter to you. It becomes more permissible to you. And you enjoy it more. So it becomes more severe and more severe and more severe. So you think to yourself, ah, my neighbor doesn't even keep Shabbat. Right? I keep Shabbat, okay, there's one thing I don't keep, but <laughs> the guy doesn't even keep half the mitzvot, yeah, but maybe that guy doesn't know, or maybe that guy knows that he's wrong, you doing that thing knowing it's wrong, but fooling yourself to make it right, you're doing a bigger avera than that guy, again, you're keeping 612 mitzvot, that guy is keeping 200 mitzvot, difference is, you've made a shita for yourself, a philosophy of what's wrong and what's right, so you've taken the yoke of Hashem off you, you're no longer serving Hashem. You're serving yourself. That bad bach probably feels bad about it or doesn't know or whatever it is. Okay. You have more to answer to. Do you understand the severity of this? It's crazy. How wrong we are in our lives sometimes. And we don't even know it. That meal at the vegan restaurant just became cool. <laughs> <laughs> It literally was like, ah! <laughs> so he says, even though the person is careful with all the Averot, he is considered as if he's done many different Averot, divided ones. Our rabbis have told us, if, if they would tell the Nazir, which was not allowed to drink wine. Don't drink wine, and he would drink. Don't drink wine, and he would drink. The same Avera. He got two Avera. He was warned, he did it, he was warned, he did it, he got two Avera. And he would, at the end, he would get lashes for both. For both of those. Just like anybody else. <coughs> So, the problem becomes, you would be lucky if this attitude was only towards one Avera. But most of the time it's not. When we have this philosophy about one thing, then it's like a disease that starts clinging on to other things. We start using the same kind of philosophy on other things to make it permissible for ourselves. Before you know it, it's not just one thing that you keep doing wrong. It's many things that we start doing wrong with the same shita. No, the reason I do this, it's not wrong. It's because for me, it's okay. Or, or the reason I do this is because... <laughs> you know, I, we'll come up with God knows how many reasons, right? To make things right for ourselves. And therefore, 
it's very, very important. Be careful. If there are things that we're not ready to take upon ourselves, we should accept that as is. I'm not ready. It's an avera. I'm trying and do teshuva from the bottom of your heart and has, ask Hashem for help. That I want to do this. And every time that I'm, I'm michshol, I'm michshol, every time that I stumble upon this avera, I'm sorry about it and I want to change it. That will help. Hakadosh Baruch Hu, we've done this before. Then He'll send you help. But if you keep it as a philosophy, like, ah, I'm good. And she's like, oh, you're good? Then keep doing it. Why? Because as we know, Hachamirav told us, Rashi writes, any way a person wants to go, Hashem helps them go that way. Even if it's off a cliff, you really want to go? I'll help you. It's kind of scary, but that's how it is. We learned that from Bil'am. Bil'am literally walked into his own death with the help of God because he really wanted to go. Baruch Adonai Amen.